Hi sharpshooters. In my last video I talked about proper grip and proper trigger control for handguns and for long guns. And I mentioned quite a few times about dry firing and why I, but I believe it's so important that everybody understands dry firing practice and that everybody does some of it. Well in this video I'm talking more about dry firing. I'm Jordy Buck and this is Michigan Sharpshooters, helping you become well regulated so together we can preserve our freedoms. Now every expert I've ever talked to or heard talk on the subject of training and marksmanship always talks about dry firing. It's a huge point of every piece of marksmanship. Everything that you can work on by shooting, you can do it dry firing with the only exception of recoil management. And honestly, that's one of the smaller points. That's something that's only useful with either big firearms or with rapid fire situations. And there's a point to that, but 99% of everything else I can do while dry firing. And dry firing gives me a chance to actually calm down and concentrate on what matters. The issues with firing a live round is that you seldom are in tuned enough or paying attention enough to notice your small micro movements. Now what I mean by that is that your brain, your brain is this awesome piece of equipment. The problem that your brain tries to give you when you're shooting is that your brain knows that there's a big recoil, a big muzzle flash, a big sound wave coming as soon as you squeeze that trigger off. So in order to not get a sensory overload, basically it kind of turns down the sensitivity level right before you pull the trigger. You don't tend to pay attention to much else the second that trigger goes off other than, whoa, that was a big boom and now I'm here and now there's a hole in the target. The problem with that is I can't pay attention to all the fine micro movements that the firearm is doing. I need to be able to have a good follow through. Follow through means that after I shoot, I pause for a second, don't move for just a split second while paying attention to every tiny detail going on with the gun, mainly the small tiny micro movements the gun is doing. And what that lets me know is, what that lets me know is when I shoot, did I accidentally move the gun a little high? Did I accidentally move to the right or to the left? If there's a big recoil, a uh, muzzle flash maybe, that big sound wave, you generally can't tell that. It's so hard to train your brain to pay attention enough to something that small when something as big as the recoil and muzzle blast and muzzle flash is going on. Your brain tries to want to overlook the small things just to notice the big ones. And that's how we're wired. It's some kind of survival thing or something. Maybe it's so you don't get a sensory overload all at once. I don't know. But it's hard to work through and that's what dry firing is for. So here's some of the tips and techniques that I use for dry firing. Number one is I've got a laser cartridge that's in this thing right now. And I don't mean like a bore sighter laser. A bore sighting style laser, you turn it on, you put it in the gun, and it's always on. You can't turn it off. Now those can work, but what works better is if you have an actual dry firing laser or a laser training cartridge. The one I have here is a Terryag, T-A-R-Y-A-G, Terryag laser training cartridge. It's great. It's probably the best at the best value you can get, and I think that's the one I'm going to recommend for everybody forever so far. But the point of these laser cartridges is I can get the same feedback I get by putting a bullet hole in paper. However, there's no recoil, muzzle flash, muzzle blast to overwhelm my senses basically, give me that sensory overload so I can still notice the fine things that I'm doing. It gives me a chance to calm down, slow down enough and pay attention enough to work on. Do I need to try maybe a little more pressure on my left hand? Do I need to try maybe a little higher with my right hand on my grip? Do I need to try a little more or maybe a little less finger in on that trigger. Left hand gripping too hard. Right hand gripping too hard. Too much trigger finger. Too little trigger finger. 
it's hard to pay attention to even, it's hard to think about all these fine points when you're firing live rounds. That's why dry firing is amazing, especially with these laser training cartridges. One of the things I really like to do for dry firing with my AR, <laughs> this thing's just fun. I'll lay down on the kitchen table, not lay down, I'll put the rifle on the kitchen table. I'll aim out the window over at my chicken coop. And don't tell my chickens because they might get mad at me, but I do dry fire practice all day long at my chickens' heads. And it's, <laughs> it's a really fun game. Those things, they move all around, their heads bob all over. It's a great way to work on my timing of the shot and on my, my calm, calming down, slowing down, keeping the trigger pull nice and crisp. I have become so much, yeah, put that away. I've gotten so much better since I started dry firing. This is something everybody needs to do. If you don't believe me, just believe the fact that every expert marksman tells you you need to dry fire. They preach this whenever people ask them, what do I do to practice? Dry firing always comes up in one of the top three or four things that they recommend for everyone. So it's a huge deal. Plus, it doesn't cost you a dime. I can dry fire with any guns at all. And it's any of my handguns, I can dry fire with my shotguns. Seriously, who actually works on practicing your marksmanship principles of cheek weld, pulling into the shoulder, proper firm handshake grip on the on the stock, my hand position, trigger control. Who works on that with shotguns? Almost nobody except for the very Honestly, the more elite skeet and trap shooters. Why don't you? You'd become a better shot. Even with something like your shotguns, practice dry firing. Right? Get that puppy. Pick a little spot on the wall. Hunker down and... See, I already adjusted my trigger finger because I realized it was wrong. I'm doing my lazy trigger finger where I hold too far back on the stock and I got to reach too far. Nope, I need to be up in there so I can get that good trigger pull. Let's go again. Better. Better. The only thing I want to be careful with dry firing is rim fire guns. Rim fires like the 17 HMR, 22 Magnum, 22 short, 22 long rifle. A lot of rim fires have an issue with the pin, the firing pin, when you pull the trigger. If there's no cartridge in there, the firing pin can end up striking the breech face and either chipping the breech face or damaging the firing pin, or both. I know for a fact that the Ruger 1022 doesn't have that issue. Ruger says you can dry fire these things all day long, so if you have a 1022, dry fire away. Dry firing. It's a very big deal, very important. You should do it a lot. It's not hard on your gun. It's easier on your guns than firing bullets are. Okay, if you dry fire a crazy lot, you do stand the potential of wearing out your gun, but it takes a lot more dry fires to wear it out than it actually does firing live bullets. And if you wore out your gun dry firing, you would have worn out three guns firing bullets that same amount of times. So it's still worth it. All right, that's what I've got for you today in this video. Thanks for watching Michigan Sharpshooters. If you like this video, go ahead and click that like button and look around for more things you might like. Bye now.